Distinguished guests, I would like to first of all welcome you to the city of Istanbul, which has been the capital of um, many cultures. Uh, I welcome you all to this beautiful city. Uh, I welcome everyone coming from different corners of the world. When I look at uh, the room, I see academicians, economists, bankers who have a lot of experience and expertise in their own field and also uh, business people. As an economist and academician who worked at the Islamic Development Bank for eight years, and then as someone who was influential as a politician in the formation of economic and financial policies of Turkey, and as president now, I am very pleased to be here with you all. And I also see some old friends, colleagues amongst you, especially uh, the president of IDB and uh, others, Nevzat Bey and others. I'm very pleased to uh, see you all here. I'm very excited to be with you. Um, you take me back to my youth. Distinguished participants, distinguished guests. The global economy has been going through very turbulent times in recent years, and uh, we have seen the crisis have a significant influence on especially the developed um, market economies. And the root cause of the crisis comes from the issues in the financial system and the uh, negative picture, economic uh, situation that came out of the crisis has had an impact on all of the world, as we all know. Therefore. Uh, policies and alternative financing uh, methods which will help us uh, overcome the global economic crisis will be very important and I think there's a lot of merit in discussing these uh, methods and alternatives uh, in great detail. And I therefore uh, thought the idea of uh, having this uh, international uh, forum on financial systems uh, very important and that's why um, this forum is held under my auspices. And I would like to take this opportunity uh, to express my congratulations to CESRIC and it, its partners, IDB, Borsa Istanbul, the MÜSİAD, and uh, the participation, Union of Participation Banks, for having organized such an important uh, meeting. Distinguished participants, for long years, the Islamic economy, uh, banking, and financial instruments uh, have been an area which was of interest only to theologians. Later on, some economists and academicians uh, carried out some um, studies, but they were generally on a more theoretical level, and they were not uh, very much involved in practice. And uh, for that reason, while conventional banking and financial instruments gained great volume and depth, Islamic finance and that sector uh, was uh, somewhat behind. On the other hand, however, the experts uh, who are dealing uh, with Islamic finance now and more recently have been um, individuals who were educated in the conventional banking system. They are people who have uh, taken on responsibility in economic management and uh, they have experience about the realities of the international financial system. I know that there are many of you who fit that description of people with that background who are now involved in the Islamic um, finance uh, issues. And uh, these individuals, experts um, and um, managers have been uh, working not only in Muslim countries or in institutions that are engaged in Islamic banking, but also in the Western countries and uh, on a global in financing institutions that work on a global scale. For that reason, uh, where we are today, we see that the Islamic finance and institutions and instruments are not completely an alternative to the conventional system, but it is a, a safe, different, and um, reliable functional choice for um, those who are in need of funds and uh, who uh, also have savings. So in that sense, in a globalized world, in the postmodern social environment, it is uh, necessary in a modern uh, economy to provide different alternatives, choices to individuals and, initi and uh, uh, those who are involved in various initiatives. It, and for that reason, uh, 
While this forum discusses global financial issues and uh, architecture, I think it's also very important that you discuss risk sharing and uh, financing models based on uh, re the real economy. I believe that your discussions and the suggestions you come up with will be very important in terms of bringing about new and viable financial instruments and processes for the whole global economy. Let me share with you uh, my views with respect to the issues relating to the global economy and the financial infrastructure and uh, uh, its problems. Distinguished participants and distinguished guests, since the 1980s, we have been experiencing an ever-strengthening globalization process. We see an environment where barriers to trade are being removed and lifted and uh, capital is uh, moving more freely. Today, the global economy and the financial uh, architecture are intertwined. And this brings about the uh, emergence of new products and uh, possibilities, but in the same way, they have the effect of increasing the specter of global economic shocks and their area of impact. And uh, therefore, no one has the luxury to uh, remain oblivious to the developments taking place in other countries, in other places. The crisis that emerged in 2008 in the mortgage markets in the United States in a very short period of time had an influence first on Europe and then the rest of the world. And uh, states which spent a lot of funds to save the financial sector at the very beginning of this crisis, in time themselves began to face the need to rescue uh, their, their own economies as a result of distorted public finances. And this crisis in the end affected uh, real economies. Many countries shrank or they grew less than the potential. As we analyze the present situation, we must uh, be mindful of the fact that the crisis is, has not been completely overcome yet. Despite all of the efforts that have been uh, taken, global risks and uncertainties with respect to economic growth continue to be the case, and full confidence in the markets have not yet been fully established. The international economic system uh, seems to act uh, on a balance of economic terror. It is for that reason that uh, the architecture of the global financial system is being increasingly more questioned. And in my opinion, the most important reason uh, of this discussion is the fact that the means and the ends in the economy and the management of the financial sector have been confused to a certain extent. We should never forget that the aim, the ultimate aim of economic activities is to raise the level of prosperity in societies and to achieve greater happiness for the people. And the basic function of the financial sector is to provide additional resources to achieve exactly that goal uh, in a way so as to activate idle potential in the economies. In the process uh, which ended with the 2008 crisis, these fundamental principles unfortunately were disregarded. The global financial um, architecture was based on uh, expectations vis-a-vis -vis the future instead of real economic value. And the uh, financial um, instruments that were uh, developed were not used to create more employment, more prosperity income, uh, uh, prosperity, but they were used to satisfy the increasing greed on the part of the financial actors in the system. And so the system was not, it was designed in reverse and risks were not properly managed. And in this framework, the financial actors did not take on responsibility. They had more the tendency to transfer the risk on themselves. And this led to a system, a burden, which um, could not be uh, undertaken by the overall system. Short-term profit Profit maximization, when combined with speculative uh, tendencies, uh, the end result was um, disaster. We must also be mindful of the human cost of this crisis. While everyone lost on prosperity, low-income groups were even more affected by this crisis. And the difference between the rich and the poor grew, and we see greater injustice in income distribution. Less than 1% of the world, world's population 
dominates about 40% of the world's wealth, while about 70% of the world's population uh, owns only about 3% of the overall wealth. Close to 1 billion people are faced with hunger and malnutrition. Unemployment continues to be an increasing problem, especially among the youth. There has been a significant decrease in the disposable income that people have and their indebtedness has grown. As a result, life has become much more difficult for the ordinary person. And under those circumstances, the risk for social unrest is at an all-time high. If such structural problems in the international system cannot be resolved, then the impact of the crisis could have an effect on the fabric of societies. So everyone now has to sit down and think about uh, where we are and question the mistakes. Where did we make mistakes? How did we make those mistakes? And what should we do to overcome these issues? These are the questions we must all be asking ourselves, and we must all be looking for answers to these questions. With respect to overcoming uh, these problems, <clears throat> The shortcomings in terms of early warning supervision uh, and regulations in the financial markets have to be taken into consideration. Secondly, it is important to minimize and, if possible, fully eliminate the risks that emerge from derivative products which are not backed by real assets. And finally, liquidity, loans, and financial instruments and access to these instruments within a crisis environment is an issue which needs to be focused on very seriously. All these uh, aspects make it necessary to uh, come up with new global mechanisms and uh, instruments which will organize the financial uh, architecture. And the Bretton Woods institutions and the conventional financial uh, instruments have uh, not fulfilled this uh, goal. There is a need for a new regulatory environments and instruments which are comprehensive and which are inclusive, uh, which are also uh, allow to take into consideration the interests of all the actors in the system. And this new financial uh, architecture must also take into consideration the weight of the developing countries within the global uh, economy. And in that uh, context, G20 is a very important platform. The goal of uh, the G20 is to uh, formulate a global financial architecture which is sound, robust, strong, and well-functioning and is based on mutual understanding, cooperation, and common sense. Turkey, as an active member of the G20, will continue to contribute to those efforts. Distinguished guests, as the international financial architecture is restructured, it is also very important to support alternative approaches which um, also uh, take into consideration sharing of risks. In this uh, framework, we see uh, the uh, interest-free uh, financial system as a complementary choice. And within this uh, framework, uh, the fact that this kind of a system is based on uh, real assets, um, it's very important and it's an important advantage in terms of overcoming any um, exploitation of the systems which would uh, render, lend themselves into crises. And, uh, in this system, which is based on sharing, where um, the investors uh, take part uh, of the uh, take part not in the earnings that come, but also in the overall system, is very attractive. And in order for us to uh, disseminate this understanding, which is based on sharing risk and earnings, uh, we must work to ensure that there is the proper perception uh, within the public opinion uh, about the benefits of the system, because at the end of the day, a new global financial architecture which is based on a just distribution of income and stable growth and free competition, uh, the uh, interest-free system will take its place to the extent that people accept it, and therefore it's very important to support the uh, such um, systems and to explain them well. 
Let me also take this opportunity to give you some information about the activities of the Standing Committee of the Economic and Commercial uh, co Cooperation of the uh, Committee of the uh, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, COMSEC, uh, which has 57 members and of which uh, I'm the uh, chairman. Uh, COMSEC uh, has um, its, uh, its members that have different levels of development, and uh, is, uh, COMSEC is working on a um, cooperation system which takes into consideration cooperation between central banks, uh, the uh, stock exchanges, and uh, uh, capital markets boards. And the uh, COMSEC SMP index within this framework is, I think, very important in meeting the demands for interest-free financing. And I ask you to, to uh, contribute to the work of COMSEC in this regard. Distinguished guests, in line with the um, activities that uh, Turkey has carried out in terms of achieving a stable economic growth uh, in recent years, we have also taken important steps in the area of finance. And there is no doubt that one of the most important steps that we have taken within this regard is the Istanbul Financial Center Strategy and Action Plan, which was enacted in 2009. The plan which is being carried out for the Istanbul Financial Sa uh, Center will be important not only for our country, but certainly for our region. With the Istanbul Financial Center, uh, we also envision uh, the emergence of new uh, financial instruments uh, for the global financial system, including uh, Islamic uh, financial instruments. Turkey is, in fact, one of the countries where there is the greatest development in terms of Islamic finance. Since the 1980s, since uh, since the time when we have had interest-free uh, financial systems in Turkey, we have seen great distance covered in this country. This. Um, practice provides for additional choices uh, to the conventional banking system and the economic actors, and it has added dynamism to the Turkish economy. The participation banks, which are interest-free financing institutions in Turkey, are uh, within the scope of the banking laws which uh, cover um, conventional banks, and this is indeed a very positive the uh, yeah, approach because uh, although uh, the interest free business model uh, seems to be keeping these banks from uh, or exempting these banks from interest rate risk the liquidity risk uh, for these institutions is also still valid the participation banks are able to overcome this risk to the extent they can collect deposits and sell their assets so in that sense there's no difference between participation banks and other banks uh, in fact participation banks are uh, facing some additional restrictions as compared to conventional banks. And being interest-free makes it more difficult for participation banks to meet their liquidity needs and hence increases their cost. For example, the interbank monetary markets, uh, the secondary markets for financial instruments, and lender of last resort uh, facilities provided by the central banks. And such liquidity management instruments cannot be used by participation banks because they are interest-based. So uh, therefore, the greatest challenge for the participation banks in the uh, future will be uh, finding solutions to such issues and problems. Therefore, I believe that it's very important for academicians, policymakers, and bankers who are with us today to um, discuss these issues. And it is, in fact, for this reason that I encouraged to uh, have uh, all this meeting here, uh, because, uh, as I said at the very beginning of my uh, remarks, the conventional system has been around for a long time, and it has uh, been possible to find um, solutions to its issues, and it has deepened its activities. But interest-free uh, banking system uh, was not really implemented and was not put into practice for a long time. And therefore, even the smallest of issues have to be resolved now when it is now being uh, practiced. Therefore, it's very important for people to, who have in-depth theoretical knowledge uh, and uh, others who have um, who know the conventional systems, uh, the banking systems, the financial systems, it's important that they get to 
issues, and that is why I really value this gathering here very much. I'm very pleased that uh, you uh, are gathered here to discuss these issues, and I have to tell you that we have a lot of expectation uh, from you uh, in terms of coming up. Yes. There are uh, also promising uh, developments in this area, which I'm sure you know. Uh, close to 15 central banks, including the Turkish Central Bank, um, have uh, established liquidity management called the International Islamic Liquidity Management Corporation. This uh, system, uh, which includes um, instruments which are in line with Islamic rules, which are of high quality and liquid, uh, will certainly be very important uh, in terms of opening new horizons in the national and international markets and will certainly bring about positive developments for Islamic uh, finance. This uh, step in the right direction is indeed very exciting and very important. And this instrument, which could be used as collateral, uh, will also can also be used uh, at the lender of last resort facilities of central banks. Distinguished guests, the trading volume uh, of Islamic uh, finance reaches almost two trillion dollars in the world and uh, this interest-free interest-free financing market with its instruments such as sukuk and lease certificate have a significant potential and these instruments are uh, suitable to use in local uh, to to use by local and um, central governments in the financing of infrastructure investments which are very important for development activities and through the work of uh, distinguished academicians, uh, representatives of the sector, and policymakers, I am sure that there will be many new financial instruments which will be developed that are in line with Islamic traditions. As I end my remarks, I would like to express my thanks, especially to Dr. Alpay, pre President of Sestric, and all those who have been involved in the organization of this forum. And I would like to take this opportunity once again uh, to greet my friends, uh, Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Ali, President of IDB, and many uh, distinguished uh, bankers, uh, experts. Uh, I greet you all with heartfelt feelings. Our Minister of Finance um, has also international experience, and uh, that uh, will certainly his speech here will certainly bring about new horizons for you in this meeting as well. So we have a lot of expectations from this meeting. I wish you all success in your deliberations and greet you all with heartfelt feelings. Thank you very much.